Forty chess. Yeah. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Let's get it. Yo, is that T Dog? Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Hey. Hey. Forty chess. This a trade show. Patreon where the trades go. Tap in and watch. That's what you came for. Ain't gotta say my name. They know my name, bro. What's good, man? We got McNutted in ATM. Always start off the show with a trade from them. You should always make sure that your trade is in. Patreon, why not be a Patreon? Know you wish you could spend every day with them. Tap in and say what you gonna say with them. Stop home and could fill up a stadium. Next time you log in, make sure that you bring a friend. We about to kick off at the day begin. Go follow the socials. 40 Chess FF is posted. If your trade is an F, you get roasted. Go like and subscribe for the crew. Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube. You know Cooper got the wall too. Let us give you a walkthrough. 40 Chess. This is 40 Chess. Would you look at that? We got a full intro this week. We, we bike. It. We're bike, we man. <laughs> I want you to put the word out. We back up. We back up. We back up. Welcome in, everybody, to another edition of the 40 Chess Dynasty football podcast. So glad you could join us. Adam, buddy, got the Red Bull popping. You ready to roll? Yeah. <clears throat> Always, buddy. Let's winter go. edition. Still winter. Winter's not coming, but it's here. So um, ready to we... rock, man. We both, over the last, uh, let's say, like uh, six, seven days, have been incredibly busy. Uh, you, for much different reasons, <laughs> you've been having a pretty decent time. Yeah. Uh, you just got back from New York. Let's go. A yeah, man. BBG action. Let's, let's roll, yeah, buddy. You know, repping. It, it was fun, man, but I'll tell you one thing. Uh, quick travel is not all that it's cracked out to be, you know? It's... um. It's a lot of travel, but it was fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man, doing that and doing this and... Um, it's crazy, buddy. Where, what episode is this right now? Do we even know? It's like one ten, something lot. crazy. Yeah. It's yeah, just keep hundred and something, <laughs> hundred and a lot. I lost count. Yep. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember what it is until I go upload it, and then I'm like, okay. And you just one. had y- yesterday. We just had the uh, you know, the, another Mike's crystal ball. You know, let's go number three in the books. That was a yep. good one too. I like that one. Pretty uh, offensive lineman, <laughs> defensive. Uh, I like seeing. Heavy, so. I like seeing Barry with the Broncos trade up to three. You know, let's go. Let's make yeah, it happen. Even though I messed it up on screen, we got through it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been running around here these last few days like a chicken with my head cut off. But my uh, my water cooling pump on my computer decided to take a dump. Now it didn't blow up or anything. It's actually still running. Um, so did some benchmarks, ran <laughs> it at a hundred percent capacity on the CPU. So it is pumping. Never overheats. But the computer thinks that it's not hooked up or running. So uh, I think the tachometer is broke. Either way, when it does it, it sends all 7,000 fans I have on this fucking beast to the moon. So uh, it's kind of noisy in here. Max capacity, you know? <laughs> uh, noise canceling software coming in real handy right about now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It takes out them. It takes out them fan noises, you know? We'll get it straightened out. But, uh,. <clears throat> A lot of big updates, right? And I think that's probably what I want to talk about tonight, just for the community, because um, these are tools, uh, like, they're becoming crutches, we'll say that, like, I mean, must. Yeah, yeah, they're they're must-haves for, I mean, I don't know. I, must-haves. I basically, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like at this point, um, you know, you, you, when you go somewhere now, like, Mike, I just, when I get in my car, I either, if I'm already driving, I hit the button, tell it where I'm going, you know, it's like, it's like GPS now, I just... Even if I know where I'm going, I put that thing in there every time. So anytime I'm going to like do anything of consequence, I'm pulling up the warp tool. I'm pulling up all the different South Harmon tools. Hopefully that's not the suppressor. Oh, that was me. That's me just being an idiot. On mute. But first off, I would say it's not officially official yet because um, it hasn't been officially launched yet. But JCAP. Uh, those of you who know him in the Discord, part of the team, South Harmon team. It's starting, uh, by the way. We we got started. right beforehand, before I come on, you can probably type that in now, actually. Um, Think so? Uh, I'll pull it up. Let's, Let's find see. out. 
Yeah. You you let me know. Yeah. But uh, you know him. He made the the sleepier league manager uh, going through a little rebrand, right? For uh, for, <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead. Purposes. Type it in. Everybody here, you can you can type it in now. It's official. Let's go. Now Let's he go. hasn't uh, he hasn't officially changed it. So I hope uh, I hope I'm not spilling the beans early. But I'll just tell you the 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 URL. So if you type in the dash lab, so think Ohio State when you do this, right? The the dash lab. lab. South, and then do dot South Harmon FF dot com. That'll get you right to what once was Bless. the old sleepier. And now it'll be, we're going to do some rebranding to the, to the page, but it'll be love it. So the lab, but the first thing, forward. the first thing I want to talk about, uh, you know, while it gets rebranded and a little bit, uh, fancier and name changes and J cap <clears throat> does his wonders. Yeah. Uh, he built an incredible tool from jump, but he keeps making it better and better. So one mm-hmm. of the things that we wanted, there will be a pick tracker in there, uh, not pick tracker, uh, a tab. So if you look at a, a league, click on a team, you'll be able to look by position and also see what their draft capital is. So right. he's able to pull all that data, which is massive for us. But the big one, the reason I say it's a crutch for those of you who don't know, um, doing startups. Now, rookies are in the system. So if you want to use regular rookies in your, your new startup draft, by all means. But if you still like using kickers as placeholders, JCAP, like this is a must. Um, so there's a pick tracker on there. Top left, as soon as you log in, click on it, <clears throat> just drop your league ID in there. You can find that in the general. Um, you go into the settings, look in general, scroll all the way to the bottom. On mobile, uh, I believe you can just copy and paste it. I don't know where the fuck you find it on the website. Sleepier's website is like, or Sleeper's website is pretty <laughs> antiquated. We call that sticking to the app, you know? Yeah, yeah. They, they stuck to what they're good at. Uh, I wish they had updated, but uh, uh, on mobile, you can just drop it in or whatever, league ID, bookmark it, save it. And then as kickers go off the board, it automatically puts in who took them and what pick number it is. Keeps track of it. So no more fucking counting for me. No more. Uh, how many do I got? Is this the 110? Fuck, I missed one. <laughs> It's got to start over. So, especially once you get into that like crush. late second and third, man, you're like trying to count twenty four, oh. twenty seven. You know, good luck. Oh, <laughs> Pello just bailing right after the intro. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just talking his shit, but either way, um, that's okay, Pello. We don't need you. Love you anyway. Love it. That's <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so yeah, uh, sleepier, or as it's going to be known as the the lab, the lab absolutely essential to a startup uh absolutely essential to league management Adam. i use this shit all the time in season tracking player shares seeing where stuff is jcap's got a lot of big plans in place for this um one of the cool things that i don't think uh people really realized was uh like the price check tool that he yeah. implemented on trades right <clears throat> so yep you could go in, you could look at trades, and the way it gets pulled is it's pulled by every person you play against and then all of their leagues too. So if you're in with a degenerate or two, boom. <laughs> boom. Lots of trades being pulled. You can see what people are going for. And then also he put in the feature where if a certain player gets dealt, you can see in what leagues who owns them and right. if they've done anything simpler. So yep, absolutely incredible. Uh, how how much of this like have you played around with the lab here, Adam? Like I, I, I know I use it on a damn near weekly basis, but during startup season, it's a uh, hourly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I use the the pick tracker in particular if I'm in a startup is like one of those that's I don't know, I'll, always using it like constantly. Um, I would say that I I haven't gotten as much into right yet because I haven't been in a ton of trade negotiations. Um, into like looking at the player shares or looking at, you know, league mate shares and stuff like that. But when I'm, when I am in trades, honestly, it's one of the things I look at. Um, it's always pretty amazing to me too. When you go and look, you can actually see, um, kind of have people telling themselves in a way, right? Like I can just look on by player shares of certain players, right? So I could click on right now for me, I have Kyle Pitts in nine leagues, RIP, right? So that's too many. But what I can see is I have him, in 30% of leagues. <clears throat> it tells you not just I have them in, actually it's down to eight now. So I'm not sure exactly which one's wrong or right, but either way, eight's still too many. And But what you can see though, <clears throat> is our guy Fizzle's got him in 75%. Right, mm. Mike, Mike's down to 10%. I can see that uh, T Cummings, who I play in some leagues with, has 43%. 
Mr. Wonderful, who I play in leagues with, has seven shares, 33%. So the reason it's important, I guess, for me to, and when I look at stuff like that in particular is, okay, I have too many shares of Kyle Pitts probably being a little negligent in a, in a few leagues or not necessarily knowing that. But I can see, like, man, somebody has him in almost 50% of leagues. They, they're probably very bullish on Kyle Pitts. So do I have Kyle Pitts in a league that T. Cummings actually has doesn't have him? Because maybe I need to go hit him up. Hey, you interested in Pitts? Or just send him an offer, right? Just throw one out there. See where he's at on it. Um, honestly, Mike, I think I'm going to start using this a lot more with the league mate shares for liquidation of players if I really want to get off of shares. Yeah, I can definitely get behind <clears throat> it. Uh, just looking to see, okay, wow, so-and-so, like, Fizzle, for example. Don't We're not picking on him, but... Fizzle loves him some Kyle Pitts. Now it makes sense why he kept trying to trade me for my, you know, handful of Kyle Pitts shares that I have. Right. <laughs> In the league we play together all the time. But that's the kind of information you can get from this, right? Right. Like, damn, it really feels like he wants Kyle Pitts. Why? And then I go and look and I'm like, oh, 75%? Holy oh, shit. Well, let's, okay. let's bump this up for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can get you to 100 right here. Maybe I can. And especially with you, you're really big on diversification in your leagues. Like, really big. Uh, you, you like to be spread out. I don't pay attention to it too much. Um, you know, I got my guys. I get them. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I get them because they're cheap. Or yeah. I get them because I made a mistake in the past and now I can't get off of them. <clears throat> Mac Jones. <clears throat> Mac well, Jones. I mean, for, for example, right? Like, there, to the point you're making here. Like, I have Cam Akers in 11 leagues. I got bad news for you guys. I'm not going to go shop Cam Akers in those 11 leagues. It, it's dead, right? Like, that's not going to be able to do anything. My, my shoddy B that I have in seven, like, these are probably shares I'm going to end up either having to cut or just praying that something happens. And that's okay. Like, But when I use it, though, it's like saying Kyle Pitts, I have nine, right? Um, Ty Chandler, who I was, it was a stash of mine for a while, now I have eight of his. That's one. When they start getting up higher in value, I think is where I want to start diversifying just because like, it kind of gets you out of the, um, oh shit, what can happen type of a thing, right? Like if you, for example, those ones where I let it dip too much, Shoddy B and Cam Akers are not tradable. They're not going to give you anything in the trade, right? Right. So that's what, why I want to trade off of some, if I have a bunch of shares high is because I can actually diversify a real value versus letting X amount go to zero um, and, and vice versa. If I have, when I had, you know, six shares of Ty Chandler and traded for a couple more and got to eight, now you're at eight. You're, when you had it low, like you said, cheap players, you don't give a crap. I'm not going to diversify that. I'm actually trying to really cheap load up on players. But then when it gets to the point of some value, okay, now maybe it's a cash out spot. I think that's kind of the way I, I like to think about the diversification is not necessarily just like, hey, I have, you know, I'm trying to think of something. It's Elijah Moore, <laughs> Rashad Bateman, and Cam Akers are my bad ones, right? You can't trade those away. There's no there's no point in trying to go trade those away. You're not going to get shit back. But if you get a bunch of shares of a player when it's at a premium point or a significant price point, that's when I kind of wanted to diversify so I don't have what happened to me with those specific type players happen again, right? So on the, uh, the leagues page, right, where it lists out all your leagues, uh, I've just been messing around here. You can actually change those headers at the top there, um, Adam, where you can change them into different settings. Um, okay. So one of the oh, yeah, things, yeah. Right, right? Basketball, yeah. Well, not even those. Um, not even those ones. Go down a little bit farther where it lists league, and then you got the columns listed across the board there. Oh, yeah, Pretty up. legit. Go ahead. All right, so I'm on league. And I go to the right of league. Um, you can change it. You click on it. You have different drop-down menus. So one of the cool things that Cap has put in. I didn't even know this till just now. Right? I'm looking at open roster. So see, which I'm, means he, I'm he, on, he put uh, in. I don't think I'm on the right page then. I can't see what where, where, did, where did you click to get there? Well, let me just uh let me all share the old screen here, buddy. There you go, boss. Let's do that. Yeah, huh? Let's get let's get fancy here. Oh, you fancy, huh? All right, so let's click this. We on. fancy. All right, so let's see solo. Let's not mess around here great for audio podcast but you guys have to play around with it too if you listen to this on audio it's absolutely incredible so adam go solo he'll figure it out i'll get you buddy don't you worry 
I think. He just know. wanted a spotlight that Bernie Kosar jersey in the background. You back see? You, now you can see it, man. Stop playing with people. Hold on. Let me get the source. All right. It's TD. Uh, secure screen. Bam. <clears throat> Doom. All right. So this is what we're looking at, right? Yep. League stab. Under my name, right? Yep. This is what I'm talking about right here. You can click on these menus. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So nice. like this one's open open roster, right? I'm full, full. I got one spot open. I'm negative five roster spot. Or I got one over. Negative five roster spots. <laughs> it's one over. You can quickly sort there. Taxi. If you play in uh, lineup leagues with taxi, right? It'll let you know if you got open taxi spots. You can click on it and change it. Waivers. Some of these leagues close waivers in the off season. You can quickly look and see, okay, which leagues have waivers open. You can also go and look at your rank in the league. I think that's based on keep trade cut value. To be I was going to say honest. that just to make sure that, that I'm pretty sure that's a keep trade cut value rank, right? How about this one? Trade deadline. No trade deadline. Week Did 14. You, 13, by the way, it's 14. a week. Those are weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Uh, your win loss. Obviously, we're all in 24 weighting, winning percentage, that kind of stuff, uh, fantasy points, <clears throat> all that stuff. But you can change all these tabs. I had no idea you could even do it. And then if you actually go and look at specific leagues like shit, like we're talking about, here's my team, list it out, and then boom, draft picks. Yep. What are you messing with? And you can look at it for every single person. You can click Mars, you know? Yeah. What's Adam rocking? <clears throat> no first. <laughs> But no you first in this league, league right? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I was trying to get you to click on that pretty bad. I, I like that team. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. <clears throat> But no, you got thirty-seven leagues, so you can do this up against your league mates that you're playing against, right? You got twenty-one leagues here. Go ahead. You can click mine. Yeah, We're in twenty-one leagues lose. together. B Hall, you're in fourteen. Wow. J Cap, thirteen. Koopa and ten is ten, and so is uh, Liebert, right? Right. Nuts. Crazy. Um, trade stab. Sure, he's updating it right now, but you got a price check, <laughs> league mate trades. This is the one I was talking about here. Yeah, this I, one's sweet. I play in a I play in one league with with Scott, but I could go and I can actually search specifically for Scott, <laughs> and just see all the trades. Well, maybe not. See see the trades right. Click on the see what his team looked like, why he made the trade, made right. it with Eric or with Eric, one of Eric's picks. <laughs> can see that date time that kind of thing I line gave. of league best ball nuts right yeah so you can filter all this stuff out i absolutely love this <laughs> <laughs> the lab to the moon buddy the love it man the moon. let's get back to the other screen yeah lab to the moon absolutely big one on the tools uh add it to your arsenal trust me and Here's the crazy thing. I mean, this is no shot at anybody else, but JCAP did this, developed it completely free, um, tested it with us for, I don't know, two years at this point, it feels like. Yep. I mean, we were promoting it. I've been using it. There's other services like this that I use. Some of them charge money, right? Some of them you got to buy a subscription to. This is free. Free. <laughs> Just go to the website. Check it out. And JCAP does a fantastic job of uh, developing and keeping this updated. And he's going to be working on some other stuff for us, too. Um, yep. He's absolutely the GOAT when it comes to this. Kind of a passion project of his where uh, he got into coding and uh, decided, hey, let's see if I can make something really cool. And if anybody knows JCAP, he's in like a billion leagues. Uh, you should know him. <laughs> you probably see him all over the place. Yeah, he, he's in a ton, ton, ton of leagues. I, I gotta ask Jake. I gotta ask Jacob how he handles all the lineup leagues that he's got to set. You know, oh, man, he is in a hundred and twenty nine leagues, Adam. <clears throat> no, I know. I'm, I'm saying like all them leagues, them lineup leagues, bro. I gotta know, like, what kind of, what kind of tool does the lab have that you don't put out for everybody that sets your lineups? So he doesn't have one, at least on this, that sets your lineup for you. But he has a lineup checker, which I use for my yeah, few lineup I, I, leagues. I actually I've seen that a couple times. Uh, I don't I don't I don't play in that many lineup leagues, so I don't actually use it that often. But I've seen I know what you're talking about. So it will tell you if you have a suboptimal player based on it, sleeper based on, projections. Right? That and it also say like injury, right? Injury, and yep. it will let you know if you have like say a a uh, early game in your flex spot, right? 
or you're playing a non-quarterback in your super flex spot, which will really only apply to Zach. Uh, Zach likes to do that. Well, <laughs> honestly, I don't even think it applies to Zach because Zach intentionally does that shit, right? Like most people would like to know it and get rid of it. Zach just and he puts it in like that. So <laughs> here's one of the crazy things too. Um, as we go along in integration, uh, JCap's actually going to have like a recommended trades based on what has happened with your league mates. So he's going to streamline this. Uh, this is his plan anyways, to streamline it even more, where you could just log in, you click on a league, and it'll tell you, here's the recommended trades based on what your league mates have been trading in other leagues. <laughs> right? <laughs> kind of like a uh, Adam where we say, know your league. Like, we're getting scary creepy into knowing other people's league. <laughs> knowing your league, right? Because we're going to know what they do in there. <clears throat> Yep. Deepest, darkest secrets. They're fish leagues. <laughs> Who they're out there getting. So, let me get that. really like that one. Yeah, that's the lab. Uh, <clears throat> now let's talk about another one that has uh, changed the game in the last few days uh, for us. And this is shout out to Koopa. Warp. This is why we have Koopa and J Cap on the tool. Warp was a godsend for us this season. Just made it even easier though. Now in startups, right? Mm-hmm. Not even just startups, but we'll just start with startups. You can pull up the warp data for that want, league. By the way, do you want to you want to screen share again and kind of walk yeah, people through this? Yeah, let me pull one up. Yeah, might yeah, as well, might as well go back to that. I'm in a couple startups right now, but you can pull the warp data up for a league <laughs> that you're in. If you, if you right are now. podcast, uh, you know, podcast version only, um, you can still listen to this. We'll try to give it to you if as, as if the screen wasn't there, but something to keep in mind if you want to go back and listen if you listen to it, you want to go back and check out the video. You can do that on YouTube. There we go. Right, let's so get that up here. Back here. Bam. How's that? Boom. Huh? Let's go. So this is your normal a warp graph. So one of the changes Koopa made, um, and we'll get him on and he's going to have his own content coming out too, but he'll talk about why he likes a warp, even for best ball more than normal warp. So this is your normal ho-hum, right? A warp graphs, adjusted warp table, Ross roster construction. construction, the whole thing. Here's the great thing. This tab right here, available players. Yep. Now when you click on it, it automatically filters out everybody that's ta- been taken in the startup already. So I'm on the clock, and I'm wondering who's the best choice to take. Based A-warp on Master's my Warp. Specifically, right. yes. I can go and look that. Damn, like Joshua Dobbs was killing it. This this now, Joshua Dobbs fella. <laughs> it was all right. He's available. <laughs> I think we're in like the 18th or 19th round of the startup too. Yeah, I think it's 18th. Well, it, it was when I just drafted. It was 18th. But here's the thing too. Like it makes it so much simpler too. Because if I go, okay, well, backup quarterback, backup <clears throat> quarterback, backup quarterback. All right, what's next? If I'm building a contender, maybe I sneak a Gus or a Zeke on my team. All right. Hunter Henry still hanging out there, available. And if you don't like that view, just the difference. Here's your old. Uh, your old school a warp graph by the way the first thing i do is always go up and hit that show 10 and make that thing big <laughs> you like a hundy let me get the whole thing on. man you know next thing i do too i always change this to <laughs> warp per game per game yep <clears throat> and it's funny because uh especially in best ball mike there was a guy pretty high up there that i was considering and bo melton on my last pick i ended up taking andre Yosovis. Love it. And by Love the way, it. it's the 19th round. And so this is the guys that we're looking at, right? So this is live time if you think about it. If you're in a startup, okay, right. and you're in the 19th round, and you know, even if you are tapped in as hell, you may not really know a lot of these names. So this is actually one of the more perfect times to use it because you know how Sleeper's going to sort it, Mike? Just based on random-ass ADP, essentially, which right now yeah. there's not that much ADP data even out there because not that many people have done startups. So um, well, It has been a godsend in this IDP <laughs> 202 league because you know what it's like. You were in the 101, Adam. Oh, yeah. We're in the 50th round, somewhere around there. <laughs> Imagine what's available and how the hell do I grade, like figure out who I'm taking. Right? Yep. But here's the kind of thing when you look at A-Warp and you go, why the fuck is Danico Autry so much higher than everybody else and why is he still available? Done. 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 Best believe I'm sniping the shit out of him for anybody who's not in here watching and doesn't take him before. <laughs> y'all, mother- y'all motherfuckers better be watching or he's gone, pal. <laughs> Leonard Floyd's next, right? Yep. Justin oh, yeah. Jones Justin after Jones. that. Preston oh, Preston Smith. Smith. There. Here you go. Yep. And then the same thing if you go, you can filter it by war per game. 
Uh, like Drake Jackson, I've thought about a few times, but then I have the conversation with myself. Uh, he got hurt so early <laughs> in the <this> season. <laughs> Did he lose his job forever? <laughs> right. Is it guaranteed that he comes back, right? Right. So this is what Koopa's been working on, right? Koopa has been in the lab just tearing it up. <laughs> yep. I absolutely love. So you got this uh, available player stab. He also changed it over if you want to go back to your true warp graphs, right? The old standby which I really do enjoy, but interested to see why Koopa really is into A-Warp even for best ball. So we'll pay attention to that one, but you do have that tab still here. But this available players thing has been a godsend for uh, for every damn startup that I've done now, Adam. <laughs> I need it. Maybe you don't need it the first couple rounds, right? You kind of got to feel like who you're going with, like what sure. the values are. Absolutely. Trust me, though, you get these these drafts of the, the 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th round plus, and you're going... Uh, Sleeper says I should take uh, Nelson Aguilar. Fuck, no. <laughs> now you can compare it, right? You can find those little hidden gems. This is a massive advantage for all those people who really, really, even even on a rebuilding team, Adam, like or a productive struggle, quote-unquote, mm-hmm. I still want to get some of those, like, vet, those crusty vets, especially in my best ball league, because those are massive trade chips. It's like, okay. I just hold them till week two, three. When the contenders really start to show themselves, like somebody's going to want an Adam Thielen. I'll get a third out of this <laughs> shit, right? The thirds may already be gone. So yep. absolutely nuts that this is a, this is a thing that Coop has been working on. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> and it's it real. is. And, and <laughs> just what's... surprised us one night he dropped it on us in chat. Yes, and I, what I love about it too, right? I, I think – in startup season, Mike, we, we've talked about it um, before, right? About being fluid, let's say. And I know, like, right now I'm get, I get a lot of questions on, like, you know, would you really draft just based on fluidity? And, you know, people were like, well, you know, I drafted Christian McCaffrey and I started drafting these type of guys. And doesn't it make more sense to just take Keenan Allen right now or Mike Evans? And I, I say if you go back before the question and something like that, just – Think about it this way, and the warp tool is great. And you, but when you draft, when you press the player button on that, like to me, it's think you have to think about it. in, all right, <clears throat> if I draft Keenan Allen at this spot, you know you're probably going to have to hold him. And if you don't know that, right. it's what you're going to have to do. Okay, so you're probably going to hold that asset until August, and you're probably going to end up playing him. Okay, so what that means is. This whole off season, if anything happens to him off the field, Dunzo, right? Yeah, yeah. There's so. there. So understand that basically, that's a hold. Where when you compare it, you may be looking at warp, saying I want warp difference makers. Not that that doesn't make sense, but are you better off taking a two o two or a younger player that you don't think projects to be as high in warp? But what it does, what it's going to do, is for the next six months keep you so much more flexible. Now, I'm not going to make the decision for you for that. That's for you to do and you to do for your team. But when you think about every single time you press the button, just know that every single time you only take Keenan Allen and Mike Evan types and Calvin Ridley types, the more of those you have on your team is what that means is the more holding you have to do and the less flexibility you'll be able to package together in making trades. Not saying either one's right or wrong. You can you can totally lean into all the old vets if they're at the right price, but that's one thing to think about. Where right now, if you stay really fluid and young, and you draft mostly rookies and young guys with maybe t- potential ups upswing still in their game, you could trade those probably to anybody. Um, so that that's the biggest thing I think right now about staying fluid is every single time you're on the clock and I don't really care how late you get down at a certain point right the draft picks are going to be gone or almost worth nothing but like still asking yourself the same question and probably once you get past the 20th there's not high tradeability for any of those players but when you when you're on the clock that's the thing you should be asking yourself in startups right now in my opinion yeah yeah I'm with you so those two tools in conjunction have really changed how I uh, do dynasty startups here, especially in the off season. Now we'll see as we transition more leagues into actually using rookie players. Yes. Um, you know that value bump, but uh, there'll be some people, right? There's going to be a lot of rookies. This happens every year too, uh, even when we do mock drafts and stuff like that. Um, 
not all the rookies are going to be in there. There's going to yeah. be dudes you're hearing about this week at the Senior Bowl who are like, who the <laughs> fuck was that guy? Right? Like the Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Conor McGregor. Who are going to be risers? You know, who are you going to want to take in the, the third round or the fourth round or the fifth round who aren't in the sleeper database right now? So, uh, obviously, you can't do it for if you're doing any kind of IDP. Those uh, defensive rookies don't come in until much later. <laughs> Much later. That's why we do all our drafts post <laughs> NFL by yeah. by a while. So, yep, it's a uh, it's still going to be imperative for those leagues to use that pick tracker. Um, I actually really do enjoy drafting like snake drafts with kickers, just for the versus rookies, just for the value. Right, uh, I'm kind of greedy. You put just a number to it, people like don't really know how to value it properly. We talked about that on Canton Bound. It always changes when the actual player name goes in, and then people get a little bit more conviction because they can actually see it and how they would compare Caleb to, you know, the other quarterbacks or Marv to the other wide receivers. But if it's just a number and it says 103, sometimes people go, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I don't know it, what I wanna, it, the pick number should actually be more valuable than the player. It's such a weird, weird thing, ain't it? Yeah, well, the, the other thing about it, too, is, though, right? It's it's a combination of that, which is, yes, I agree with, but it's also, like, for example, we don't have landing spots. A lot of people don't have any clue where these guys are going to go in the draft, right. what their names are. So, Mike, if you were to draft one with names, you know what happens? That is now Caleb Williams. That is now Xavier Worthy. That's now whatever player you pick in that spot. Right now, what you have is one, you, you have another draft. So, what do people, what do we know? People love the draft. Sometimes when people get into all these startups, it's because they can't say no to drafting. Literally. like Addicted. <laughs> they yes. want to draft. So you have another draft set out in the future. And what right now is the two, like especially as you go further down, I think. Not saying you're not right at the 103, right? But like as you start getting down further, people are like 203. There's 14 picks before that. I, I, don't, I can't even project a player name here. So they may not want to touch it. All of a sudden, 203, man, that's endless possibilities as we start you know getting the combine info and if you're doing a post nfl draft man all the hype right you have all these first round offensive skill players people are going bananas 203 which you got probably around or around and a half later than you should have because if you waited and did that startup in let's say end of may or in june they're creeping up pal they're going way up so um (laughs) <laughs> that, I don't know. That, that, that's the way I look at it, and I, I like doing it with the placeholders too. It's fun. So, just in conversations, Cuba's in the chat too, so we can uh, we can ask him directly if you got questions for him. Uh, you're in here, fire away. Um, but some of the things that we talked about, he already put in there. Rookie pick values be coming to the warp tool. Um, Scott <laughs> did a fantastic pod year, maybe year year ago at this point uh, when he was first starting to look at warp. And then looking at historical warp values for each selection, uh, just what that selection did for warp. So that's yep. going to be a thing that's going to be there in the future. Uh, with the warp tool, being in the Discord, having access to that warp charts chat with Koopa where he can just answer questions, troubleshooting. Uh, anytime we had a, a problem with the tool, it seemed like that dude was fixing it within minutes. <laughs> Done. But... Uh, also suggestions and some of the things that I proposed to Koopa, I let him run this thing because uh, he has made a fantastic thing. But uh, some of the things that we'd like to see just down the future, you know, maybe we can integrate a little keep trade cut feature in there too, just give you their position rank, um, and then historical uh, trends, three year averages, that kind of stuff. You can kind yep. of see how players move where that wouldn't actually have a player name on it. It would just have the the position like QB two is usually here, right? QB five is usually here on the graph. So all that stuff. Look for it to come to warp real soon. But for right now, Jesus, I'm uh I'm like a pig in shit, man. Just rolling around <laughs> in the fact that uh a lot of that damn, I'm on the clock. Who the fuck I gotta sort through this whole list of shit. Hopefully I got a queue of guys already. Nope. Queue's empty. Fuck. Who am I taking? Damn it. All right. Yep. First thing I do, Adam I go, I go to the lab, I pull up the pick tracker, <laughs> where the fuck we at with rookie picks, all right? Yeah. <laughs> 405, yuck. All right, I'm going to take a player here, but I don't know who the fuck it's going to be. Next stop, 
Warp. Warp. <laughs> Warp. Warp. Thank you, Koopa. Warp. <laughs> Who's left? <laughs> Who's good? This guy, Bo Melton, seems legit. Let's take him. Yep. Adam, if uh, if Mohawk doesn't take him here, he lives in New Zealand. Trust me. <laughs> we'll push the button on I'm Bo I'm taking Melton. him. He's mine. <laughs> I'm next up. <laughs> I love it, man. I got next. Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure the picks in that league are shit now. <laughs> We've been hammering the hell out of them. Dr. B thinks this is AMA. He's got his days mixed up. But uh, speaking of drafting, Tua or 107 <laughs> at the 312. I've got Allen in the 101 already. Tua or the 107? Yeah, 24, 107 or Tua. Who are you taking? Oh, we we just shit on Dr. B's trade this <laughs> week for the 101 <laughs> earlier today. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I'll give you a, I'll give you a, I'll give you a little preview. Um, I'm flicking you in the fleshy patch where your nuts used to be. All right. <laughs> I think I go the 107 here. Flexibility. Yeah. I, man, this is tough, brother. Um, I don't mind the two a pick either, but they're they're, they're like close. To flexible Pe- people. I, I like need to. I like to be flexible too. Now, the only thing is, like, um, if you did want to just lock down your second quarterback and give yourself a chance to take Marv or, like, the quarterback there, if you want to see how, like, the only thing taking Tua does is it, because we're so early, it gives you a flexibility from the rest of the way you draft, right? Like, what I mean by that is, if you lock up Tua here, every single pick from here on out, you don't have to worry about, do I do I need to get a second quarterback? Do I need to get another quarterback? Um so you, you could do – I think you could do either. I, I personally would take 107. I like to stay flexible. But um, I think there's definitely a case to be made that the value for Tua is um, going to be better long term. Like when we get to the season I would, I'm, when I'm, is what I mean by that. But if you're someone that wants to trade and kind of have a real big flexible um, opportunity, I think it would be 107 for me. How about for him? We know the context of it though, right? Sent away his 25 first. Oh, yeah, he's going for it. Get- I'm taking Tua. <laughs> He's kind of like locked himself in already to go, fuck, got to do something here. If it's that same league I'm taking to it now, uh, make sure I don't have to get in a spot of needing quarterbacks down the road, right? Yeah. I think I'm taking to it. I think you, I keep buying it with that context. My, my 25 first is already <laughs> gone. Fuck it. <laughs> I mean, because right now you'll have, you'll have Allen and Tua as your two quarterbacks, so you, you can still take a third, right? Um and, and Caleb or Marv, I guess. But that, but I think the flexibility aspect, because given the fact that you have already then moved you your 25, yeah. yeah, now you can go either way. You can build your team in the rookie draft how you want. Yeah. I, I think I um I think I do that. Yeah, it's right on the borderline. Just in a vacuum, I'd probably want the 107. Given your situation, Dr. B, I think I'd take Tua. And uh, we now are back to the uh, regular scheduled 4D chess podcast. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess we finish it out too. Uh, just with a discussion here, Tyler Pello, he had a good one about the, okay. uh, the pick always has more flexibility than the player itself. So <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I was, that's exactly what I was saying is that that player, once you make that play trade for that player, that pick of that player, you can trade that player now. Right. But man, you have the one Oh seven for, to the point of the one Oh seven. We were just talking about with two of the reason what's so great about the one Oh seven is you can trade that all the way as the value builds and that can be anybody And like as the drafts happening, Mike, if there's a scenario where there's enough first round quarterbacks and someone needs a quarterback and they're falling down the board because receivers are going, we're gonna, we got guys like Malik neighbors and we got Marvin Harrison and Rome. So if all of a sudden a quarterback becomes available at the one Oh seven that people weren't for sure, psh, you never know what you can trade that for on the clock. And it does, it does give you a ton more flexibility to Pello's point. It's- so when I did that uh, mock draft mayhem, right, uh, we finished it off three-person first-round rookie mock based off of the first round from the uh, the total NFL mock, Adam. You can believe this shit. I think I took Malik Neighbors at eight. Ooh. Ooh. What? And that's, a, that's Malik Neighbors who in the mock went seven overall in the NFL draft to the Titans. Crazy, right? Just when you think about it. People hate the Titans situation, don't they? Yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of interesting ones, right? Like McCarthy to the Vikings, right? That pushed him up. 
the mm. board. Uh, you had <clears throat> you had Brian Thomas ended up being the one twelve in the draft, and he went twenty six overall to the Bucks. Right, so Troy Man, Franklin, his, come his, on. His, Troy, Troy Franklin's destination to the Bills was pretty tasty for people. The Ravens, Keon Coleman, the Chiefs, Adonai Mitchell. Uh, there was a lot of good ones, right? We had a Brock Bowers again going fifth overall to the Chargers. That pushed him up the board. Uh, quarterbacks went one, two, three. <laughs> so you know Jaden Davis, really? Jake Mack, yeah, yeah. Caleb Williams. All those guys were going to go high. A Dunze. Went before neighbors in the NFL draft to the well, Giants. Yeah, because if you went, you said neighbors went at eight. So, oh, he went six. Yep. yep. So there was a lot of intrigue there. So, not saying it won't, it's gonna happen like that. But just, uh, just an idea. That's why I like doing those exercises, just to see what happens if, if, if the NFL draft were to shake out somewhere in that where, range where people would get extremely excited <laughs> about uh, adding I Mitchell to the Kansas City Chiefs, right? I like this. We could call it. We could almost call this whole podcast. Remember the Titans? Rem- remember when remember AJB went to the Titans? <laughs> <laughs> remember people hated remember people hated that landing spot and uh how'd that work out right so yeah that's where we're at here i like it to uh dr b firing back at me because i said he only had 10 leagues so he's trying to get more <laughs> good for you dr b <laughs> see <laughs> i told you man shit. i told you that people are very much um you say whatever they want but peer pressure is still very much a real thing um it don't take much to get dr b pumped them leagues up man you know those are rookie yeah, numbers. Yeah. Those are rookie He'll numbers in this up. racket. He'll pump them up. So those are the tools, Adam. Anything, I mean, we're just spitballing here, thinking about the future. Yep. But chat, chime in as well. Any other tools that we think would be pretty handy? Like, I think an auction tool <laughs> would uh, go gangbusters, right? If we could have a recommended auction based off of, like, a warp. Like, <clears> here's what you should be spending your budget on. Here's what the max, like... <laughs> A player who's uh, QB one or QB two should go for in well, this league. We got, uh, you know, we got something coming for you to that effect, right? Let's do it. Let's not spoil. I'm, let's not spill the beans, but we got here, something, man. man. You know, I like that teaser <laughs> game. Teaser game. Fucking teaser. What, but what else? Yeah, put it. If you have something, um, put it in the chat. You can put it to us later on. Now, you don't. If you're not live, you could do it to it after the fact. Um, certain podcasts actually you can drop a comment and do that you know if that's on your platform yeah. let us know Especially. if you have tools that you've thought about or things that you wish you had right like if like if you had chat gpt that could build you anything it just consider that it's south Harmon. but you know just what, what would you tell chat gpt that you wanted you know that's south what we want to know gpt exactly south Harmon koopa J cat we'll call it Listen, I'll take that rather than fighting with somebody about Brock Purdy all day. Because <laughs> guess what? We don't have chat GPT, but we got the lab, baby. We're going to cook that thing up. We got Cap and we got Koopa. I think we'll be fine. And DB running the analytics. Let's go. Let's His stuff is walk and go. By the way, speaking of that. right now, I, I have a hard time even keeping up on the daily with... Um, I'm, in, I'm in like a, a private chat with him and... Uh, who is it? Uh, Pello. Him and Pello. And dude... He's oh, always Jesus. putting in there like fucking just the updates of this thing. And it's it's insane how much data this guy is powering through right now. Just just know when, be, when when it's all said and done, it's gonna be ridiculous. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Dynasty Barry and his rookie running back PFF data. So that's what we're gonna finish on. <laughs> Let's do it. Because with all the good updates, hiring D B to run the analytic part, to do the stuff he was already doing, but more in an official capacity officially part of the team incredibly <laughs> smart love his process the way he works but uh he spent all that time pulling all that data right <laughs> four thousand running backs he's working on wide receivers now i think that's seven thousand plus <laughs> yeah it's over seven it's over seven k all right barry's grades and if you want to see him you gotta be part of the patreon eight dollar tier let's go i was gonna say we had the good stuff up there. i was gonna say mike be careful how much uh how much preview we give here you know Right, but just looking at it, <clears throat> right, I pulled up Barry's grades, which uh, Barry has a lot, if you want to know, hit the chat, Wrinkled Brains, that's the spot to hit him up, ask him about what goes into it, but trust, the process is pretty good, as Pello likes to say too, for the wide receivers, it's the model that predicted Puka Nakua last year. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that p- predicted Tank Dell. 
So here's the thing. Uh, Barry's grades. Pull data from running backs. Historically. Um, highest graded running back for Barry's grades, Adam. You got to guess who it is? Um, is this all time? Yep. Rookie class. Uh, let's see how far back he goes. Uh, we got some 20s in here. This is this is rookies coming into the league, right? Yep. Rookies yeah. as prospects. I, I remember he, I've seen he sent so many of this stuff as he was coming through it. Pretty sure it was um, – it was either – 20, 2020 it was either, draft class. It was either Jonathan Taylor or Travis Etienne. I can't remember who was actually first. It was one and two. Okay. I, who was first? Etienne, I couldn't JT. remember which one. I know they were both really high. Who was first, though? Etienne. He got a 98.1. JT got a 96.6. Okay. Um, Bijan, three. Mm. Yep. You want to know something fucking crazy, though? Yes, I do. All right. I, I always want to know something fucking crazy. This is the second time I've heard this name this okay. week. Yep. One was Christian. Where he said, "Hey, go check this fucking guy out." Mm-hmm. All right, I've uh, seen some glowing reports from the Senior Bowl so far, at least at the measurables, just how he looks on the field. <clears throat> Coming in at number four, right? We're Is gonna he, break are you it. Ta- are you, you're not talking. It's not Bucky Irvin. It's um, Davis something. Right? Isaiah, Isaiah fucking Davis. Davis. There you go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, better Barry <laughs> grade than uh, some pretty. And I think this is all running backs back to the 2020 draft class. I was say, now, 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 mind you, while, while it is exciting, like I think pretty strong, actually pretty high up there was uh, strong, right? Pierre Strong? Yeah, Pierre Strong came in at seventh. Yep, yep. seventh on this list. So pretty high up there. Um, and uh, uh, Bryant Kobach, remember him? <laughs> Toledo. I feel like I do. Yeah, it's a little kid, right? Yep. It's a little kid. Yeah, he's yep. pretty high up here. So there are some outliers up there, but just to see Isaiah Davis's name up here as as coming in as graded this high on DB's grades. So what the fuck? What and then the uh, fuck? Christian out here, <clears throat> just on a whim too, not even off Barry's grades, but telling me that hey, you should go check out the film on this guy. <laughs> Isaiah and Davis looking at it, yeah, and going like, all right. <clears throat> Now, you know, there was two interesting ones I remember seeing when he was running through the numbers and kind of spitting them out. Um, one, a guy that, that flashed quite strong this year was pretty high up on Barry's grades. Uh, Keaton Mitchell was pretty high, like top 25 or 30 or something like that of all time, right? 11. 11, 11 yeah. <clears throat> and then a guy that I might am still struggling to get behind, frankly, but I'm considering starting to move a little bit higher in my ranks. Is someone who's really, really high on his um, his ranks, and that really is going to be de- it, like indicative of seeing Derrick Henry move on. But that's Tajay Spears. If Tajay yeah. has that role, I think he's going to end up going a lot higher, man. And I'm kind of looking at him like a potential Rashad White type, where it's like, fuck, man, if this guy's going to get that work, if they don't have anyone else there, like, shit, do I have to buy into right. Tajay? And I haven't really bought in before. I think for me, uh, I'm going to wait on the Tajay until after free agency. Exactly. In the NFL draft. Exactly. Right? If but, I uh, know that, if I, the only problem is that to that point though, because I'm with you. But as soon as as soon as Derrick Henry has moved on, let, let's just say that happens, Mike. If Derrick Henry's moved on and they don't draft a decent pick, they don't use a decent pick on a running back. Tajay's mm-hmm. gonna his price is gonna reflect that. I think. Like, where do you think he'll end up going in startups? Like, I think probably six so round for sure. Right now he's RB fourteen on keep trade cut. It's pretty he'll be, he'll be he'll be top ten. He'll be top ten. Oh, maybe that's what's going to keep it away. So I look at uh, Rashad White. Right, that was your comparison. Yeah. This time last year he was RB twenty two. And so Tajay starting, you know, he's ahead already of the curve. He's already, already <laughs> he's already the, the the sexy one. Damn. <laughs> I think I think we might be too late, buddy. I'll tell you <laughs> I think what, though, the Tajay Mike. Ship has sailed. Let me tell you. Let me tell you though. Um, in like, if I was in a startup, this is this is personally in in that seventh round range where it where it kind of gets gross. I'm okay taking. I think maybe a flyer on him right now and projecting that he has a chance to take that workload um, because he's got that type of skill set. But I think to the point you're making, man, I would love to take him at the in the seventh round after knowing he's the guy. The problem, I think, though, is if he becomes the guy, like where does that freaking draft pick have to happen? If it's in that fifth round range now, y'all can have him, man. You know uh, what I mean? So he he was the running back right after Saquon Barkley that went in our uh, our best ball startup that we're both in. 
And, and I almost took Bark. Uh, he went right after me. So he went at like the 612, correct? Or 701? Uh, 71. Yep. Rip yeah. on the turn. Yeah. So um, I was going to take him at 7 2. I, I, I screwed that one up, man. I thought uh, I thought he was going to make it back, but he didn't. So then what did that mean that Tajay went? 7 5. 7 5. Yeah, I think I think like seven five right now is about right in a projection. Like, if, I think if you draft them at the seven five and they don't draft a running back and they mm-hmm. don't bring back Henry, I think you're. I think that's a pretty good spot to get him. Frankly, you think you still got a little uh, wiggle room, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think you still have a chance to see some value bump, right? right. But the problem is, it, if he does it, Mike, I could see he's going ahead of Barkley just because of age and people get crazy about age right now at running back. I could just, I could see it getting out of control a little bit. So I was trying to think back to that too. I took the one twelve right before Tajay went off the board. I'd still take the one twelve right now. Okay. Okay. I think so. Just just the way that class is. Yeah. But the, the difference is you know I think I know that at one twelve I'm probably very much locked into a receiver unless something really crazy happens with like Braylon yeah. Allen or whatever, right? Any qualms with like the running backs who went after him? Jacobs <laughs> Brian Robinson, Swift, Mixon. No, I'll take Tajay ahead of those guys right now. Just because of the chance. All all those guys right now that you mentioned after, Mike, if Tajay has the Titans backfield, if he's even the 1A, let's say. Let's just say Derrick Henry moves on and they don't – they draft a running back in, let's say, the fourth round. Like, uh, yeah, I want Tajay over all them dudes right now. Eight – 9, 10, 11, 12. He went as the the RB40 off the board, too. Just the symmetry of that. Now, the one one interesting part, though, about that, Mike, is that, like, the running back position, when you start to really go through the rankings, it's different than it was been in years past as far as, like, you don't project much out of any of those guys afterwards. Like, you you can kind of see where the scenario is going to change. There's the guy in free agency. You don't know what his role is going to be. He's getting older. So... I know it sounds really rich versus like the RB22 for um, Rashad White last year. But right. the other thing we talked about with Tajay on um, something earlier this week, really good in pass protection. Really, really good. So if you're telling me he has a chance to get a lot of this yeah. three down work, um, that's where he could. That's why I'm using like Rashad White. The dude could be out there all three downs, right? And possibly seeing goal line work. I think you're behind it. If he kind of maintains this. And we get through free agency in the draft and nothing really changes. I think, you know, spending that late first on him is a worthy play. I think uh, acquiring yeah. him in the startup in the seventh round, you know, end of the sixth is probably the play. Yeah. I can get behind that. Yeah. I get a lot of Tajay. Barry, Barry loves him on his grades too, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty damn high. So, yeah, to the to the Barry's grades point, man. Um, I, Mike, I would say I use it. And it's a, it's a good way to wrap up the show, I think. I, I love having the combination of all three of these things, right? You think about the lab and the ability to really, like, it's going to be what um, I, I'm i going to be a week behind on doing my uh, individual podcast, highly detailed this week, because I was in New York last week, uh, last weekend. But when that drops, it's going to be really dissecting your league mates. And, Mike, I got news for you. Um, <clears throat> the lab's going to be a part of how you can – tie that into the podcast with what you can do to go look through that right so you use that and a lot of research and your league mates and understanding them right and then um you look at the warp tool and you look at like all right where am i getting the most value what positions what players maybe are trending that way if you're going to project picks versus that what should you do and then barry's grades right wrap it all up you put all those into one man that's a lot of resources that you have at your disposal if you're part of the Part of the South part of the South Harmon crew. If you're a shithead, man, a lot of lot yep. of information at your fucking hands right now. Yep. And uh I'll add one more to it. One that we launched last week. Yep. Team reviews. In case you need that hands on approach. Eric, Koopa, Adam, <clears throat> myself, all a part of it. Dealer's choice on who you want, what the combo is, whether it's a solo, whether you want to be on or a part of it too, do it in real time. Uh, and talk it through, or you just want it uh, here. Here's all the information. Tell me what I need to do. We got it. We got all the tools. We have everything available that we could possibly want here to to help people out. It's just really a uh, you know a smorgasbord of what you want, right? It's like going to the buffet, a good one. 
a Vegas buffet. <laughs> and not that one from Vegas Vacation either, where it's D- like not, some of the yellow, not, some of the blue. I don't want that yellow, okay? Um, no. No yellow. If you want Barry's grades, you got to go to patreon.com forward slash patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. Uh, as of right now, if you type in the dash lab and then dot South Harmon FF.com, <clears throat> as of right now, that's all free stuff. Um, a ton of really good stuff there to check out the warp tool. You want the warp tool at South Harmon FF.com forward slash warp or like you remember the uh, you know, ball is life. You could use warp dot life. Warp is life. Um, you check those warp out. Is life. Those are the those are the ones that get the warp tool. Six dollars and ninety cents a month. But uh, those repertoires are all there. And if you want the Dynasty Team Review, it's DynastyTeamReview.com. Pretty simple. Straightforward. So, and, hey, you get a discount, too, if you're part of this Fodge tier already. I can yep. hammer you hard. There you go. Them up for that. There you get go. You, if, you're, if you are on Savage tier and Secret you want password. to check out Dynasty Team Review, we got a code for you, man. So come hit us up. Um, but, yeah, man, there's a, a slew of things South Harmon is offering to you. Whatever your preference, right? Visual Learner. Audio, audio learner, whatever it is, we got you. Oh, man, look at that. Koopa just hit it with the end. Perfect way to go out. The lab is now linked on the nav bar on the website. Don't even have to look for it. Simple. Let's go to southharmonff.com. You're a simpleton. Done. Done. Simpleton. Find your team reviews. Find the lab. Sign up for the warp tool. Also a link to the Patreon. If you want to join, get DB's grades. Be a part of the conversation. Woo! Busy, busy, busy week, man. But incredible. But uh, this was one that we needed uh, to knock out, right? Let yeah. the people know uh, this has been incredibly helpful. I cannot stress this. So probably the one thing that has come along outside of just warp in general and just how it shifted my views on so many things. But for ease of use, <coughs> buddy, 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 a massive fucking time saver. Don't need to click multiple tabs. I don't got to have shit open. I just go, okay. <laughs> Hey, Warp, uh, oh, that guy's a backup quarterback. Nah, it doesn't fit, doesn't fit, doesn't fit. Ooh, shit. Look at this guy, Bo Melton, fucking 20th round. Or I can go to the lab and see that I could pick the 404 and go, Bo Melton or the 404? Which do I want? Breaking news. It's going to be the Bo Melton. <laughs> breaking, breaking news. Breaking and news. Uh, when you think about that, right, it's what he just said in that. Whenever you want any of it, you just think, oh shit. Oh shit. South Harmon, baby. That's what you need. Just remember, when your league mates are playing chess, play 40 chess. Love y'all. We'll be back here same time, same place next week for another edition of the 40 Chess Dynasty Football Podcast. Peace. Peace. Peace.